During the Kursk operation, Ukrainian forces captured over 600 Russian soldiers. The captives include conscripts, mobilized personnel and contract soldiers from the Russian armed forces. Conditions for holding Russian soldiers in Ukraine and their views on the war and Putin were explored by military correspondent Bordana Lyaskivska of RBC Ukraine. More than 600 military personnel are already in captivity. There are officers, Chechens and Kadyrov's militant among them. We will exchange all of them for our guys. This is also one of the objectives of this operation and it justifies itself. President Volodymyr Zelensky said, commenting to Western media on the Ukrainian armed forces operation in the Kursk region. RBC Ukraine journalists were able to speak with some of these captives. The captives themselves are surprised by the conditions and treatment. We were told it was better to greet with a grenade than to be taken captive, but here everything is quite different, says one of the Russian soldiers. One captive is only 20 years old. He says he joined the army to get an amnesty and was indifferent to the so-called special military operation. Now on camera, he admits that Russia did attack Ukraine and does not understand the purpose of it. When asked how to stop it, he shrugs and says, it's all politics and Putin. We understand it's bad, but we can't do anything about it. He says somewhat bewilderedly. This young man, along with other Russian soldiers, was captured on August the 18th. They found themselves completely surrounded and surrendered without a fight when the Ukrainian forces approached. They say they were treated very well, not even bound, and were immediately given food and cigarettes. This young man has only known Putin as the leader of Russia, given his age. When asked if he considers this normal, he admits he doesn't know if the dictatorship will ever end. Most don't even go to the elections because it will still be Putin says the Russian soldier. Many captives assert that they do not need Ukrainian land. They have plenty of Russian territory and are willing to leave Ukrainian land, but are unsure how to make that happen, as all Russian militants will not lay down their arms or leave the state border. If someone does, a new batch of soldiers will be sent in their place. Although the captives speak as if in touch with reality, the guards claim that their words should not be taken at face value. Since they are in special conditions, they might say anything. However, they are not actually threatened here, unlike Ukrainian captives on the other side of the border. A logical question arises from the captives. Do they know the conditions Ukrainian prisoners are held in? They say that although the TV shows them in good condition, they know about the torture. Vietnam's northern provinces closed airports and evacuated residents as Typhoon Yagi is set to make landfall Saturday afternoon after killing two people and injuring nearly a hundred others in the Chinese province of Hainan. Vietnamese meteorological authorities described Yagi as one of the most powerful typhoons in the region over the past decade. It brings wind speeds of between 150 to 166 km per hour meaning it is at a level 14 or a strong typhoon, state media cited Nguyen Van Hong from Vietnam's National Center for Hydrometeorological Forecasting as saying Yagi is expected to land near the coastal province of Quang Ninh, home to the UNESCO World Heritage Site Ha Long Bay. Known for its many towering limestone islands, where state media said hundreds of cruises had already been cancelled. The government has issued several alerts and those vulnerable to floods or landslides were evacuated. Four airports were shuttered, including in the capital, Hanoi, and the port city of Haiphong which is home to large factories, including EV maker Vinfast and Apple suppliers Pegatron. Authorities had pruned trees in Hanoi to make them less susceptible to falling, but wind and rain knocked over several along with billboards in northern cities ahead of the typhoon landing. Local media also reported that many moored boats were swept out to sea. Yagi struck the Chinese city of Wenchang in Hainan province on Friday afternoon with wind speeds of up to about 245 km per hour, 152 miles per hour, near its center. Local authorities said Saturday the typhoon left two people dead and injured at least 92 others. Some 420,000 Hainan residents were relocated before the typhoon's landfall. Another half a million people in Guangdong province were evacuated before Yagi made a second landfall in the province's Xuan County on Friday night. 
Haikou's meteorological observatory downgraded its typhoon signal from red to orange on Saturday, as the typhoon moved further away from the city. Before leaving Hong Kong, Yagi forced more than 270 people to seek refuge at temporary government shelters on Friday, and over 100 flights in the city were cancelled due to the typhoon. Heavy rain and strong winds felled dozens of trees, and trading on the stock market, bank services and schools were halted. Yagi was still a storm when it blew out of the northwestern Philippines into the South China Sea on Wednesday, leaving at least 16 people dead and 17 others missing mostly in landslides and widespread flooding and affecting more than 2 million people across the archipelago. More than 47,600 people were displaced from their homes in Philippine provinces and classes, work, inter-island ferry services and domestic flights were disrupted for days, including in the densely populated capital region, Metropolitan Manila.